Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamerguru.com. Today I'll be working on clips and masks in Affinity Designer. Trimming, clipping and masking are some of the most frequent topics on the social media groups I attend. I wrote a lot of short step-by-step -step tutorials on various aspects of clipping and masking. A lot of them made their way into my helpful hints. Grab them for free, the link is in the description below. Let's start with a quick overview of the options we have to clip and mask in Affinity Designer. First up, there is the layer mask. It's a raster image that defines the visibility. Then there are the clipping masks. The visible area is defined by a shape that the content is clipped into. Then we have the masks to below. They work similar to the clipping mask. And lastly, there is the raster mask where I take an image or a bitmap and rasterize it as a mask. Let's start with this image I imported. I want to clip it to a rectangle with rounded corners. I create the rectangle and drag the image in the layer panel into the layer above. I can also cut and paste inside with the edit menu. And now the rectangle defines what is visible of my photo. I can release the content by moving the rectangle above the image again, I can use the mask to below. It has the same effect, but the focus is on the mask that I can easily edit, not the content. I can either release the mask or just drag it in the layer panel to get my vector shape again. I can change the color of the rectangle and won't make a difference to either the clipping mask or the mask to below. It's a little different when I add a Gaussian blur. Using it on the clipping mask, the content gets blurred the same way the mask is blurred. When I use the blurred rectangle as a mask to below, on the other hand, it just blurs the edges. Of course, it's not limited to rectangles. It works with any shape and I can adjust the effect at any time or add it later to a mask to below. When I use this shape and turn it into a rasterized mask, the effect is quite surprising. We don't see anything. It erases everything that's on the screen because the rasterized masks are color sensitive. Black is fully transparent, white is fully visible. These masks also work on all layers below unless they are restricted by a group or are inside a layer or attached directly to one layer inside the layer panel. The rasterized layers work just the same as the mask layer at the bottom of the layer stack. Once I create one of those masks, I have an empty raster layer on top of my image. Seeing this is a raster layer, I need to switch to the pixel persona to edit it I mentioned that the rasterized layers are color sensitive. What happens when I use neither a black or a white, but a color as a raster mask? Let's create a rectangle in red and use that as a rasterized mask. I place it on top, delete my old mask. Once I rasterize to mask, you can see the layer becomes semi-transparent. Well, now you see it becomes semi-transparent. The circle is shining through. That was a pure red. What makes the difference is the luminosity. If I make it a darker red, say just 20% luminosity, it becomes a lot more transparent. A lot lighter, it becomes less transparent. So the luminosity level of the color makes the difference. Another key feature when working with masks is the lock children. It's in the top menu. I can tick that and the content stays where it is while I move my mask, scale it, rotate it. 
I untick that one and the content moves with my mask. Click it and I can scale my mask while the content stays stationary. I don't have to restrict my mask to just one path. I can have multiple shapes masking the same image. The easiest way to do that is create the shapes and combine them. Using the boolean add, I can combine my four rectangles and use them as a clipping mask. Seeing this is a vector shape I used as my clipping mask, I can go in and use the node tool and alter it. Change the nodes, add new nodes, add the shapes, or add new shapes like a circle and subtract it from my mask and the content will still be inside that clipping mask. I can add a rectangle to it and the same thing happens. I have my shape and the image inside. A problem with this approach is the destructive nature. Once you combine things with a boolean, they no longer are as easily editable. Let's create the four rectangles and make them a compound instead. These remain editable. I can change the content I can add to it. It comes with one downside though. I can't make a compound a clipping mask. It just does not work. It adds the element to the compound rather than clip it inside. But I can make it a mask to be low. Now I have my fully editable compound and the image inside. I release the compound change my rectangles and change it back to a mask to below. And just when you thought those were enough options, there is one more. I nearly forget that one because I rarely ever use it. It's the vector crop tool. Selecting the crop tool with the image selected allows me to change the visible area by moving the controls. In the layer panel it tells me it is a rectangle but it does not react like a rectangle i can't round the corners it is a square shape but i can convert it to a curve which allows me to edit it like any other vector shape with this i think i have covered the basics of masks in affinity designer there are a lot of ways you can combine use and adjust the masks. I dedicated a whole section in the helpful hints just on that. Have a look at it. The link is in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and learned something new, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon, leave a like and let me know what you want to see on this channel and I will see you again soon.